Hello Booktube! This time I'm coming to you with a rather special video. Uh, here in Finland, on the 19th of March, we have a, we have a flag day, meaning that we uh, raise the Finnish flag in honor of something. And today we honor Minna Kanth and gender equality. So, who was Minna Kanth then, you might ask. Here is Minna Kanth. She was born in this exact state, uh, exact date, um, in 1844 and died in 1897. Sort of give you some kind of Context you can think of writers like Emil Zola, August Strindberg, uh, Francis Hodgson Burnett, William Morris, Tolstoy, Lewis Carroll, just to name someone. So think of that time period and you get some kind of idea what we are talking about. And Minna Kant was born to a working class family. Her father worked in a textile factory. Um, but he eventually ended up becoming a shop owner, so um, they were able to sort of um, increase their living standards, so to say. So, although Minna Kant didn't come from, you know, from the upper classes of society, she was able to get a very good education, especially for a woman of her time. In 1865, she married Johann Ferdinand Kanth, her natural sciences teacher, which of course was a bit of a scandal, as you can imagine. They lived quite a happy life together and had seven children and worked together for a newspaper and stuff like that. Um, after her husband died in 1879, uh, Minna took, took control of the family's um, general merchant store, so she ended up becoming a businesswoman. Also, after her husband's, husband's death, uh, she became sort of she started to sort of take more seriously her writing career as well, and she started writing plays. And some novels, but it's, it is especially her plays that sort of cemented her reputation as a sort of very uh, very important gender uh, equality activist. Now I have read only one of her works, and that is the play. Työmiehen Vaimo, The Worker's Wife, probably in English, published in 1885. That is perhaps her most famous play. And in the play, there's one young woman, Johanna, who marries a man called Risto. And Risto ends up drinking all their money, especially all her hard-earned money and of course that leads to lots of tension and misery as you can imagine uh, so yeah Minna Kant possibly took a lot of influence from real realistic writers such as Henrik Ibsen and Emil Zola. So that's the kind of that's the level of realism you can sort of expect from her plays. Um, now I found the characters in the play be a bit caricaturish, but that I think only sort of helped to make the sort of social politi political 
um, aspects more pronounced. So it became very clear that men have too much power compared to women and that alcohol is a bad idea, basically. But what I really liked about the play is that Minna Garth doesn't spare the women either. Like, she clearly, I thought, showed uh, women being divided into sort of two camps. There are those who, uh, those very uh, conservative women who favor traditional gender roles, and then there are those women who uh, seek eman emancipation and who want no, yeah, gender equality. Uh, unfortunately, I I don't think any of her works have been translated into English, so. I'm a bit unsure if there's any sense in making this video, especially for an English audience. But, yeah, I just want to talk about this. Anyway, back to the other side of the video, which is gender equality. And to some extent, we Finnish people can, can thank Mina Kant for our gender equality being as good as it is. And, for example, in 1906, Finland became the first state, um, first European state to grant universal suffrage and became the first in the world to give all adult citizens the right to run for public office. 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 Uh, in other words, we can say that Finland was the first country to grant women full political rights. However, gender, gender equality things are... Well, there's always room for improvement, it's never perfect. For example, care duties are not equally shared. Like, women have more rights for the children than men, which has also become one of the sort of biggest concerns for men who want to have children, and they are afraid that after the child is born, uh, women want a divorce, and then the men will never see their children again, and will have to pay for uh, pay for their child's upbringing. Then. There's still some issues with payment, so we don't have equal pay yet. And there are si there's still some violence against women. I don't, I don't know how that could be changed with legislation. So it's all about fixing, fixing weird mindsets. Then also all men need to waste, <laughs> rather spend half a year to a year at military service or at civil service. Apparently because we need to turn boys into men somehow. But that is still you know, a big gender balance issue, at least from men's point of view. And of course we have some other problems related to gender equality. Sorry. <laughs> then, there's no point listing them all here. So, problems remain, but we have really come far from what it has been. So, all in all, gender equality is really good compared to, compared to what it was. And here in Finland it's almost utopian when com compared to to say how things were a hundred or even just a few decades ago. So yeah, we can thank Minna Kant and other brave people for daring to challenge the status quo. And yeah, I guess that's it. And 
yeah, I'm back to my bookie activities now. Happy Minna Kant's Day, happy Gender Equality Day, and see you soon.